RBB Morning Show, the coach, mentor, marketing, and social media strategist you need each and every morning. RBB, a live morning talk show that gives you the ability to get the coach you need, strategist you wish you could afford, social media manager and strategist, marketing strategist, project manager, certified OBM, VA, business startup strategist, profit strategist, web strategist, email funnel strategist, sales page strategist, PR strategist, time management, mindset, and overall business development strategist. We answer it all. With over 25 years of business experience, both in corporate and small business worlds, we really can answer it all. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday morning. I can't believe it's Thursday already. Another week. Where did my week go? It's flying. We've been really busy around here. My week is like gone and I didn't even realize it. And today I just want to curl up and read a book. It's that kind of day. And no, I don't like to read. So it's that kind of day. It is pouring out and just kind of hot and steamy. And I just want to curl up with a book today and not like do anything. Except for I have a very, very, very long list. So that's not happening. Okay, so how is everybody today? I hope everybody's having an amazing day so far and is going to have an amazing day today. Um, I'm trying to get everything to behave for me. Yeah, we're not showing a split screen right now on uh, the yeah video. I've redone it twice, so hopefully it'll work now. So how there it goes. There we go. Everybody's having. There it goes. Today, we're answering your social media questions. So good morning, Sandra. Thank you for joining us. And I'm going to add a couple other people in that forgot to join us yesterday. And they're like, you didn't remind me. I'm like, oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so adding other people in. We are answering your social media questions today. So I have this very long list. So first question, SEO, what is SEO? So SEO is not a social media question, sort of, but it does your social media ties into your SEO. I'm going to take my glasses off since you can't see my face. Um, SEO is search engine optimization. It's how search engines find your website, find your social media posts, find you on Pinterest, all of those things. Um, so Pinterest, remember Pinterest is a search engine. So it's part of how Pinterest operates. Um, your SEO are your keywords. They're keywords that explain who you are, what you do, all of those things. And you need to follow through in your social media posts, bringing in those keywords, those same keywords you would use on your website for SEO or for Pinterest for SEO. You need to bring those into your um, social media. Instagram, that's easy. You're using hashtags to do that. Facebook, you actually have to use those keywords and be posting consistently on Facebook. And that's part of SEO is consistent consistency. And that is a word, I think that should be like tattooed on my forehead or something, because I talk about that so much. We should replace your fairy wings behind you with consistency. Maybe I'll print consistency off and stick it over the top of it. Um, consistency is the key to all of this, your SEO, your social media, all of that. So that's what the SEO is. So another question. So you talk about Pinterest being a search engine, but what does that mean? Okay, so a search engine is where people go to search for things that they're looking for. Um, so searching for anything on Pinterest is more visual than Google. It's the same thing as going to Google or Bing to search for something on the internet, except for you have a visual representation of it in Pinterest. It's like Google's photo album. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. It's just your visual search engine. So search engine is where you search for something. When you type something in on your phone, um, if you're on an iPhone and you type something in Safari in the top bar, you're searching Google. Um, when you're searching for something online, that is a search engine that is doing that searching for you. That's just what Pinterest is. And those are in the keywords that you pop in, like when you're searching a hamburger casserole recipe. Those are key words that are popping up in, the, in somebody's, uh, the title of their pin, the description of their pin, the link of their pin. A hashtag in their pin. Yes, you can put hashtags in your pins. So 
Search engine. Search engine. Um, next question. Instagram. I'm not getting any new followers on Instagram. How do I get new followers on Instagram? So there's always follow-up questions. And obviously, I can't ask this person because they're not here live. But there's always follow-up questions that go with this. What are you doing for your posting on Instagram? Are you posting every day? That is my first question. Are you fully utilizing your keywords, aka hashtags? Are you using Instagram stories? Are you interacting? A lot of people just post it and forget it. You have to interact and engage with other accounts in order to grow your own account. Um, I always say that like 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes a day is a good rule of thumb. And that's what we do when we're trying to grow an account quickly is about 15 minutes a day of going and commenting and liking other people's accounts. And when I say commenting on other people's accounts, I mean like five words minimum um, and truly interacting and not just saying, oh, I love your Instagram feed. That's not actually interacting. Commenting appropriately on a picture. Oh, that's an awesome place that you visited. Why were you there? Um, is this one of your favorite vacation spots? I mean, asking actual questions because you want genuine back and forth interaction that helps that person on their feed. It will also help you on yours because you're interacting. So interaction is a big piece of it, but you need all of the pieces together in order for it to work. You can't take shortcuts to grow your social media. There is no so shortcuts in the social media. Sorry. It's a commitment, but I mean, it is a commitment, but it's minutes of your day type commitment, not yeah. hours. So if you are a uh, time blocker or anything like that, like I am, um, you could actually have just a block of time that's recurring every day that's like that reminds you to go like in the morning or in the afternoon or whatever it is and make sure that you're getting your stuff up getting your engagement up getting your interaction whatever it is that you're doing you have something that's reminding you to do it so that you can stay consistent it also helps to ha like have it on your daily checklist if you wanted to like there there are ways to help yourself be consistent and get consistent and get into that habit and, and it's an important habit to get into if you're trying to do anything online to go out and interact on the behalf of, of yourself in your social media. It's the only way it's going to work. Same thing with Pinterest, going out and liking other people's pins and, and repinning them and things like that helps grow your own account on Pinterest. Facebook works a little differently, but you just have to be active on Facebook, consistently active. So that is that. Commitment on 10 accounts, five words or more, not including emojis, right? Um, yeah, 10 accounts is a, a good rule of thumb. Th that's actually pretty good, Sandra. Um, I, I tend to put a time, not put a, an amount of account stamp on it. I tend to put a time stamp on it. So try to do as many as you can in 15 minutes. And you can you can use emojis in your comments, right? Like, it's just you want to make you sure. You can put them in your comments. comments. Yeah, but the, the thing that um, counts is the words. And, and you're helping yourself out and somebody else out by putting at least five words. But you can add emojis. There's nothing wrong with using emojis if you love something or whatever. But just make sure. But you're liking and commenting, not just one or the other. It's important to do both. So I have a Facebook group and I'm trying to grow my group. How, what is the best way to grow my group? First of all, you have to be, to grow your group, you want to be interacting, come back to that interaction consistently, consistency, um, is going out, sorry, I was reading Sandra's comment, uh, going out and interacting in other people's groups that has possible, your possible ideal target for your group. Um, the eat, some of the bigger groups have a day of the week where you could share things like that. Feel free to, uh, some of them do not allow you to share other groups for obvious reasons. You're in somebody else's Facebook group. Don't poach, but talk to people, get to know people, truly connect with people. It takes time. Growing a group is not a fast thing. I had a group, um, that I let go cause it wasn't serving me. Uh, I had 3,700 members in that group, but 
it's important to make sure that you are looking for your ideal client for that, for your group, whatever that is. They aren't necessarily paying clients that you're looking for. They aren't necessarily um, a certain ma major target that you're looking for. You're just looking for women who own businesses or something like that. So make sure that you're targeting those. Another great way to do that is Facebook ads. Um, growing a group is, there are so many groups. There are millions and millions of groups. And I can't remember what the stats were from my last dev meeting for Facebook, but there are millions of Facebook groups. So standing out from the crowd is not going to be easy. So you're going to need, if you're looking to invest and really grow your group to help grow your business, you're going to have to invest in it. It's not, it's not something you could just throw out there and hope somebody grow, like comes to you. Filling out your profile, your profile appropriately so that you have your group in your profile so people can find you. Uh, filling out the group profile appropriately so that people can find you can use hashtags and keywords for that. You, that helps. Uh, all of those things help, but you've got to invest a lot of time and effort into growing a group. It is not something you could just throw up and hope it grows. It really does take a whole lot of time. Now, there's the virtual assistant sisters group and I can't remember the whole entire name, so I'm getting butchering it and getting it wrong. It's Latoya and Nakia's group. And they put an incredible amount of time and effort into their group. They're going live daily, talking to providing value. They do uh, feature spotlights on members. They have paid training that they offer a couple times a week. They do work groups. I mean, they spend an incredible amount of time in that group and it is starting to grow, but even that has taken the months and months of doing that extreme amount of work to start to grow that. And it's an amazing group. Um, so keep that in mind. You have to invest that this is something, if you're looking, you can't do this for free and you can't bootstrap this very easily. Bootstrapping you can do, you can just remember you guys, you can always, bootstrapping is always an option, but it, it, takes, takes, longer. it takes longer. So it depends on how patient you are. Gina does not go into that level of patience for anything. Just so y'all know. No. No patience for that. No, I don't. But, I, abs I absolutely do not. <laughs> but make sure that your profile, yes. Get told yesterday, link in your personal page to your business page. Yes. Make sure that you your profile is fully filled out. If somebody goes to my profile, they get sent to my DG marketing page or my B Boss Girl page. I mean, that is right front and center in my personal Facebook profile because people are, you're interacting. Your business isn't necessarily interacting on everything, so they don't know who you are or what you do. They go to your profile to find that. So make sure the profiles are fully filled out. In linking your business page to your to your group page. There was at one point doing that hurt your business page reach, but Facebook has since fixed it. It was a bug. It was not something they did on purpose. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, this is just something, this is just a random thought that I'm having. You guys are going to have to excuse me. I am not all here today. I've been really ex exerting a lot of brain power. So like random thoughts are coming and I would not be surprised because so many people are starting to use their personal profile page as a business style page. If Facebook didn't roll out some sort of LinkedIn style features to like actually like cultivating like a business type stuff within it, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, right now what's I, I can't fully share what's on the horizon. Facebook is actually going to be locking that down even more. And oh, thank God who start, who are sharing their business stuff consistently. I mean, everybody's going to share some and, and they don't mind that necessarily. And they should because it's part of their life, but people are running their businesses off their personal profile pages. I know so people. many. So yesterday I actually had somebody read, was it yesterday? No, it was earlier this week. That I makes had somebody me, reach out that to makes me laugh on Instagram. They lost their Facebook page, their personal page. You know what? I'm sorry. I hate to be a jerk, but when I first came into the um, business space, I was adamant, like the, the online business space, the Facebook world, I was adamant about my personal profile had nothing to do with business because it was my personal life. And so like, and people kept made fun of me. They were mean to me. Like, I mean, it was like, and now like hearing that it's like sweet vindication. Well, it's always been against their terms of service. 
always been against their terms of service. That has exactly. not changed. Now they're they're really they're gonna they're gonna actually I like down on that. I can think of a couple of people right now that that would be a devastating blow to their business. And like, I wish I could say that I was sorry, but like because I was so adamant about that, I was like, this is my personal profile page. It has absolutely nothing to do with my with work. That's what LinkedIn is for. <laughs> like that's what my business page is for. So like, and I never under, I never understood. I always felt like it was backwards running your business off of a personal profile. I always thought I I was like, that, that makes no sense. Like, so like, because my husband is on there, like my sister, my, my, like my nieces, you know, like my, my family is there. Right. So it's like, that's like, it's felt like such an invasion of privacy. And like, now that just cracks. So like, that just shows you guys. I was ahead of my time. I was ahead of my time. That being said, though, your personal profile is not private from your business connections, period. And I I have been encouraging Gina to look at Facebook differently because I, I mean, I'm connected to personal stuff. I'm connected to my brothers, my sisters and stuff like that. But I, I very rarely post strictly personal anything on my personal page because my business connections see everything, period. And yes, you can put privacy down and you could try to lock things down. It is not locked down. I guarantee you it's not locked down. The minute I like something that you shared on your private page that's supposed to be private, that means all of my business connections can now see it. So keep that in mind is there's actually nothing truly private ever. If you're posting it online, I don't care how password protected or how locked down it is. It is not private, period. I mean, I don't mind talking like, so here's, this is my thoughts on like, I don't mind like having like connections and like interacting and like having a conversation and developing a personal relationship with somebody on my Facebook profile page that I don't have issue with that. Where I was having issue was that I was like basically being told to like, that was like my marketing platform. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was, well, that's my, that's my issue. So that's so like, just to make that very clear, yeah. you know, going live every day, posting my offers on there. Like that was my marketing platform. That's where I marketed. That's where I grew and built my business. That's yeah. where I have issue with developing connections and, you know, de- like cultivating relationships and all that I'm totally down for it I don't care but the, uh, like the actual like building growing and that being my marketing hub that's where I was struggling so I just want to make that clear I don't think I ever actually like articulated it that way so that that's that was my issue so just to be clear for everybody um so so just just keep all of those good morning April hey, April April is a really is a friend of mine. We were Instagram friends. She's got the cutest little baby girl named Sage. She's a friend of mine and she's a funnel person like me, but she she develops her. So this is where you and her would actually get along. Danielle is she actually like custom builds them on WordPress sites. Like if I'm not mistaken, April, you're like an actual web developer, right? Like correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, she's super cool and she's super cute. I love her. Well, hello, April. Welcome to the RBB morning world. (laughs) So Facebook is your personal page absolutely, absolutely, absolutely should not be used for a business, period. And, oh, I was right. <laughs> and, um, but, and Facebook is, is clamping down on that. So, I mean, I'll share things every once in a while. Well, I share things like a couple, maybe once a week, twice a week. Um, that's okay. Cause I'm sharing things from my business page. People who are using their personal page, they're going to be sorry. Yeah, they, they are. And like, they're, I, I'm, I'm so serious. There are several people that I can think of and I'm just like, so here's the next question that, that I cannot believe I'm getting it. Cause I have preached this for the last two years. I can't believe somebody personally messaged me this and asked this. And I know this person has heard me say it before. So Facebook, I want a personal page and I want a business-based page. So I'm going to say, I set up a new profile and you can't have two Facebook profiles. You can have a Facebook personal profile in many, many, many business pages attached to it, but you cannot have two separate profiles. And um, the minute Facebook realizes that there are two profiles attached to one IP address that are both female, et cetera, you're gonna lose them all. One smart catches you, one smart catches you. (laughs) And you can't fight it and get it back. 
They, yep. I mean, there's Facebook jail is the first thing where you get put in jail for like two weeks or something like that and you can't use anything. The next stage is they just delete everything and you can never get it back. And you can't from your IP address, which is your home, that how your home registers having internet, you cannot for a minimum of a year get a new one. It's such a shame. So I have preached this for so long. Please stop doing that. Yeah, don't do it. Big Brother's yes. going to catch you. It's against terms of service. Yes, and they also stopped you from Messenger. It's also, Facebook is discussing that it will also stop you from Instagram. They own both platforms. Yeah, people forget that, that Facebook is actually the, is, owns Instagram. So like they could very easily like shut you down from not one, but two platforms. Then what are you going to do if your whole business is, okay, so this is something that I like rant about and I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to go down a rabbit trail. So, but- this is why you need an email list. Your social profiles should be pointing and funneling people to your email list because that is the only asset you own on the internet. That is the only asset you own, have any control over whatsoever. So if you are, so think th like those things that we're just telling you guys, like just think about the gravity of that for a second. Just, just, just let that sink in. And then the next thing is think about those of you that are getting chatbots set up and are using chatbots for marketing. You lose your Facebook page and Instagram page. You also just lost your chatbots. Yeah. Oh right, April. I only need to download that list. You better, you better have a backup. Now all the nerds are coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, have a backup of your list. Audience. Have a backup of your list. Now we're not well, all the news. No, I got a notification yesterday. You'll love it. I got a notification yesterday for a client that had left me on their um, MailChimp account that their MailChimp account had been inactive for a period of time and they're going to shut it down. Make sure that you get all of the lists out and all of that. So I poured this onto the client and the client, well, what's in there? I said, your email list. Have you your not? Contacts. This, this is a past client. They have a marketing person internally now. Okay, so I just let me let that sink in a little bit. Make, makes me feel a little good. Uh, and like your email list, you haven't been emailing your email list. Their email list is 35,000 people, or at least it was. And they just let it die because you know that if you like, there is a rule of thumb. And like, I learned this when I was going through my OBM certification that if you have not emailed your list in 30 days, it's considered a dead list. Mm-hmm. And you might as well delete all your contacts. 5,000 people, they let MailChimp notice that nobody had emailed out. I don't know how long it's been. So this is a long time because I had a demo MailChimp account that I set up last year to do some, to do some training videos for people. Like, and like they were emailing me recently going, hey, we're going to delete it. I'm like, well, that's cool because it was a demo account. Yes, April, that's money left on the table. Like your email list is your, the, those are your warm leads they're already the people that actually want to hear from you yeah they, they actually like your stuff like oh god that's i'm sorry i'm so, i should not like i'm like trying to okay i'm just going to Thirty-five thousand people at least <laughs> that's what it was last i knew oh i just was horrified they're like oh what do you mean um, you better go get your email list that's no good. Like just download it. Like you guys, spreadsheets are your spreadsheets on your desktop are your friend. It's okay. You can have them. So anyway, anyway, we're going to wrap up. Uh, it's about that time. Thank you everybody that came and joined us. Thank you for joining us today, <laughs> April. I'm Thanks happy for coming, April. Fellow girl on here that understands the tech world. I'm so, I'm so glad April is here. She is our, she is our folks. <laughs> April's our April's our people. Have an amazing day, everybody. Today have uh I hope that we see you over on the mindset challenge over in the Be Boss Girl group. Tell us what you're up to this week. Every morning, April. We're here every morning from at 8 a.m. at 8 a.m. to 8 30 a.m. Eastern time. Every day. Come with your coffee. Turn on <laughs> notifications so you know that we're going live. Um, so remember to rise, become, and be today, everything that you can in your business. And we look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Tomorrow is wrap up. So I want to hear your crazy questions tomorrow morning. I don't care if they're social media based. I don't care what they are. I want to hear crazy questions tomorrow because I want to end this week on fun.
Yes, we Fridays are the fun day. We're probably like Fridays are fun day. So there's no structure, none of that. We're just going to talk about our week. Come ask us crazy questions. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Have a great day. RBB Morning Show, the coach, mentor, marketing, and social media strategist you need each and every morning. 